like to stop talking about everything else and start focusing on the reason why you're all here, we would love to hear Sister Reem Faruqi read I Can Help. After Sister Reem reads I Can Help, we will be able to ask her some questions. What is it like to be an author? How did you think of that? Why did you do this? You can post your questions in the chat while you're listening if you want, or you can have, have maybe your teacher can have a recorder, um, write down the question on the board so that you can read that out loud. There are only going to be a little bit of time. I wanted to read to you Reem's biography here in the book. So author Reem, Reem Faruqi based I Can Help on a similar experience from her childhood. She is also the author of Layla's Lunchbox, Nira's Picture Day, and Unsettled. Layla's Lunchbox was her debut, and Mashallah won lots of awards. Reem lives in Atlanta, Georgia, here in the United States. Um, and we will post information for you to follow her um, or look up, look her up online in the chat, inshallah. Sister Reem, assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam, Dr. Sheza, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm well. It's so wonderful to have you here. We'd love for you to get started. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay so you can really see the pictures. Inshallah. Um, one minute. Okay, can you see the pictures? Yes, it's getting up there now. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. Can you see this one too? No, we see that one. It says, I can help. It's the title. Yes. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to start then. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for introducing me. This story is called I Can Help, and I hope you'll really enjoy the pictures today. It's written by me and illustrated by Michaela Provost. And th in this story, something that happens to Zahra actually happened to me when I was a little person. Okay. Just when the leaves are thinking of changing colors to look like the spices Nana cooks with, school starts. There are 18 kids in my class. One of them is Kyle. Okay. Kyle is great at drawing. He always has his sketchbook open. Kyle is great at drumming. He always taps, 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 music during the breaks. But Kyle is not great at reading. He has trouble sounding out words. Kyle isn't great at handwriting or cutting or gluing either. He needs someone to help him. So every day, Miss Underwood asks, who will be Kyle's helper today? I always raise my hand. I can help. <laughs> and if you like to help in your school or your class, you can put a thumbs up and I'll see you on the Zoom. Okay, cool. I love to help too. Because Kyle is generous. He always shares his favorite chocolate chip cookies at lunch. Because Kyle is funny, he is good at telling jokes. Because Kyle is kind, he always smiles at me. And later, I might ask you what your favorite cookie is. Just like Kyle, mine is chocolate chip. One day, Miss Underwood chooses me to help. We do such a great job that Miss Underwood gives me not just one, but two thumbs up and tells me, Zahra, you really are a super helper, aren't you? I sit up nice and tall. And if you're sitting, you can sit up nice and tall as well. Good. <laughs> Kyle copies me and we both laugh. <laughs> Later at recess, I take my turn on the swings. When I'm all the way up high, I realize the leaves are no longer thinking about changing colors. They're already the colors of red pepper, cumin, and turmeric, the spices Nana uses. Even though I'm at the top, I can hear my classmates talking. Kyle is such a baby, says Tess. He looks weird, says Ashley. Hmm. I want to keep swinging, but I stop. I want to stop listening, but my ears listen harder. Tess walks closer to the swings. She looks like she wants to turn. Why do you help him? Asks Tess. 
I was going to give Tess a turn on the swings, but instead I start swinging as high as I can. Why do I help him? I try to stop thinking about what Tess and Ashley said, but I can't. Hmm. The next day, Miss Underwood asked me to help cut paper for Kyle. My hands feel heavy as I pick up the scissors. I am ready to cut, but then I notice Tess and Ashley looking at me hard. You can see them um, right here. Let me just see them a little bit. Right here, look how they're looking at her. I wonder what Zara is going to do next. Hmm. Let's see. Uh oh. I put the paper down. My hands feel even heavier. Do it yourself. I say, pushing the paper at Kyle. I don't recognize my voice. Kyle's face is stamped with worry. Hmm. Zahra, I notice you aren't helping Kyle today, says Miss Underwood. I want to answer her, but I don't want my mean voice to come out. I blink the right amount of blinks so I don't cry. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> the next day, Ahmed helps Kyle. I notice that Tess and Ashley are smiling at me. I look at Ahmed helping. I look at Kyle smiling and working. I wish I could smile and work, but my lips aren't smiling today, even if I try. Does he know I still want to help him? You're mean now, Kyle says to me. I notice that Tess and Ashley are watching me. Are they listening? So? I still don't recognize my voice. My face feels hot my heart cold. I stare down at my paper and pretend to focus. Kyle keeps looking at me like he doesn't know me. I don't know me either. I've never written my name so slowly before. I only look up when Kyle walks away. So at this point, I usually ask the students, what do you think Zara is going to do next? And I get a lot of good answers, like, yeah, she's going to help. But let's see what happens to Zahra. And Ms. Reem, if you want to take a minute and, and let somebody answer, I know that you had asked if we could be a little interactive. I think we're doing good with time. Okay. Would that be okay, Ms. Sure. Does anyone want to raise their hand and let us know? What do you think Zahra will do now? We have anybody who wants to share their thoughts? I see a couple hands from. Oh, Maggie. okay. I'm not looking at the video. I was looking for the. Okay. Oh. Um. Oh, okay. Yes. Go ahead, Amina. Would you like to unmute and answer that question? Okay, Amina, and tell us where you're calling from and how old you are. What, what, what was her question? So, Amina, uh, can you first tell us how old you are and where are you calling from? Where am I from? Where are you calling from? Yeah, where do you live? Oh, I... Which city? I, I'm six years old and I, I, I live in Dubai South. Mashallah. So, um, Amina, what do you think Zahra is going to do now? She's feeling so different about herself and Kyle? What do you think she's going to do? Um, maybe she's going to give up. And behave how? Give up with what? <clears throat> maybe she's going to, she's not going to go to school, maybe. Thank you, Amina. Welcome. You're right, Amina, she does keep going to school, but I wonder if she's going to be kind to Kyle or if she's going to stay mean. Oh, and someone else is talking. Okay. Then, um, do you want me to go on the next page? Yes, okay. feel free, Miss Room. Yeah. Okay. It's fall again. At my new school, I have a chance to make a new start. 
Sometimes I find myself looking for Kyle, even though I know he's not here. It takes me a while to learn my way around. I've never been in such a big school before. Hmm. So she's actually in a new school. She's moved. So Kyle isn't here anymore. Hmm. One day, when the trees are golden, I see a girl. She looks a little like Kyle. Today, she looks lost. Maybe she is new too. I find my voice, the voice that I know and am proud of, the voice that's mine. Hmm. Do you want me to ask Dr. Sheza if they know what she's going to say? Or should I just go on the next page? No, go ahead. Okay, does anyone want to guess? What do you think she's going to tell this new girl? And I do see a hand from, I don't know her name. Nora. Naeem? Oh, oh sorry, Naeem. go ahead. Oh, we can do Naeem. Okay, Naeem, go ahead, Naeem. Unmute. Assalamu alaikum. I think she, uh, like so. I think she's gonna um, start talking to her, and if she needs help, she'll help her. Mm. That's a great answer. I hope so. Does anyone else want to guess what she does? I know I saw Nuran, and I see um, the teacher Miss Dahlia by the screen. Yes, I'm like, can my class share, please? Yes, yes go ahead, Miss Dahlia. <laughs> okay. Yes, Layla. Raise your voice, Layla. She will say welcome to class. Oh. <laughs> you think she'll say welcome to class. All right. Thank you. I love that. You all need to write your own book. You have some good answers. <laughs> okay. Let's see what she um, says. Okay. Go back. One second. Okay. So it says today she looks lost. Maybe she's new too. I find my voice, the voice that I know and I'm proud of, the voice that's mine. Are you new? I ask. I can help. So that was a really good guess, Layla, um, to say welcome to class, almost the same thing. And she does use her voice that she loves now. And really quick, this was the end of the story. But just like Sarah, when I was in school, I sat with a classmate who sometimes needed a helper. And I, enjoy, I enjoyed helping him. But one day, these two people came up to me, just like Zahra, and they said, why do you help them? And then um, I felt so embarrassed. Instead of using my kind voice, I used my mean voice. And I still regret it to this day, so many years later. So I always tell students to make sure to be kind so you don't have any regrets and to be consistent with your behavior. And the illustrator, Michaela, um, had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, so she looked a little different because she wasn't able to do as much as the other students. And she remembered um, some students were kind and some students were helpful. And Michaela and I are both teachers, and we remember the students who are kind. I still remember their names, even though I taught years ago. So being kind is always so important, and your teachers will love you and your friends. So thank you all for listening so beautifully. And if you all have any questions, I think Dr. Sheza will let me know. And thank I can you so much. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Oh, do you need to pause sharing the screen? Yes, you can you can stop the share screen and we'll go ahead and view. So I'm looking at everybody's screen screen at this point in a gallery view so that I can we can feel like we're all together, mashallah, in one room. <laughs> Miss Reem, as we're waiting, if anyone has any question, feel free to please type it into the chat. And I will go ahead and get started with the first question, Miss Reem. What when did you start writing stories? Oh, good. Um, I started when I was nine years old. I got a journal on my ninth birthday and the pages smelled like bubble gum and I kept writing and I still have that journal. So even now I write, uh, when I finish one journal, I keep it and then I write another one. So I would tell all the kids out there and adults to keep their journals because you never know when it's going to be helpful when you write your book. All right, thank you. That's really good. So writing in a journal helped. I see somebody, it says me to everyone. It says I have, if you, oh, I wrote that. Okay, that's my Ramadan past. 
I thought it said, I have a question. Does anyone have a question for Ms. Reem that you would yes. like to ask? Mike, please, my class has some questions. Yes, Ms. Dahlia, but they need to speak very loudly. Maybe they can come up closer. Okay, so yes, yeah, come. Bye. And maybe one person okay. can come stand behind him for the next question. Okay, yes. Emily, yes, ask your question. Yeah. Okay. When did you start writing your first book? Oh, good question. I, when I was um, 25 years old, I had my first daughter and I stopped teaching and I stayed home. And that's when I wrote Layla's Lunchbox. And Miss um, Reem, what is Layla's Lunchbox about? Oh. It's a Ramadan story. So it's a story about a girl called Layla. And some of you might be fasting. And she's really shy to tell her class that she doesn't have her lunchbox because it's Ramadan. You might have read it. It came out a few years ago. And she goes to my favorite place in the world, the library. And then she writes her teacher a note at the end of the book. Very nice. Thank you so much, Ms. Reem. Inshallah, maybe next year or before that, we can have you come join us again. We have one more person from Ms. Dahlia's um, class. Yes, and then have, we're sorry, we have, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. After one yes, more, we can on. Go ahead. I was wondering that when did she, when did, when did she like, I mean, how did she think of Layla's lunchbox? Because I have it at home and I think it's really, I think it's really nice. Oh, oh thank you. Thanks. So just like Layla, I moved from Abu Dhabi to Peachtree City, Georgia. And um, I thought of the idea one day I was cooking food and the title popped in my head, Layla's Lunchbox. And I thought, you know, it would be really fun to write a story about a girl who accidentally forgets her lunchbox. And then I wrote the story and I'm so glad you like it. So it just popped in my head and I read my old journals. And when I moved, I was really sad about moving. So I used that emotion, I put it in the book. Wow, thank you so much, Ms. Reem. We'll go ahead and have Nuran unmute and ask her question. When, when did you decide that you wanted to be an author? Ooh, I think when I was probably your age, I really wanted to write children's books but I also really, really wanted to be a teacher and I taught second grade and I love second grade. So if you're in second grade, yay. But um, I think um, when I read a lot of books as a teacher, I remember thinking, I wish I could write a book. So when I was a teacher, I really wanted to do it. So I wanted to write, but I became an, I thought of seriously becoming an author when I was a teacher. And I do have another book that I think is in my other room, but it's called Amira's Picture Day. And if you like Eid, you're gonna really enjoy that book because in that book, Picture Day takes place on the same day as Eid and Amira doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I watched um, a video um, kind of premiering it and it seems super cute. I love it. Yeah, thank you so much. So oh, thank you for your questions. We have time for one more question. Anyone else? You can raise your hand. Yeah. Oh, I should. No. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else want to ask a question? Oh, Amina, do you have another question? Go ahead. When when you when you wrote the book, were you happy? Yeah. Uh, that's a good one. I was happy. But I'm also still a little sad because um, the classmate that I was mean to, I don't remember his last name. So I can't look him up to really apologize and say sorry. So I would always recommend if you do something that's not kind, try to say sorry like that minute or the next day at least. Mm -hmm. Because when you wait too long, it gets hard to say sorry. And then you forget important details. So I'm still a little sad about this because I still feel bad about Kyle. Um, but I'm also happy because you get to read it and I love the pictures. Does anyone have a suggestion for Miss Reem on what she could do for Kyle, even though she doesn't know him? How could she do something for him, even though she doesn't know him or where he is anymore? Yeah. 
We could even have an adult respond. Yes, anyone? She can, she can give him a thank you basket. But she doesn't know where he is. She doesn't know even his last name. It was in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> and it was in a different country. What can she do? What can you do for someone when you don't know where they are, who they are anymore? What can you do for someone? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Is there anything people can do for people when you don't even know where they okay. are? And uh, some of uh, my students yes, want to Ms. Dalia. One of my students want to answer. Can okay, they answer? Ms. Dalia, go ahead. Yes. Yes, that would come. Yes, they would. Yeah, she, can write, she can write about him so she could uh, remember him. Okay. And she has. Yes, they would. She can write about him so, so she can remember him. Well, yeah. and Dawood, that's a really good point. She's written this story so other people can learn a lesson from the mistake or something that she learned along her way. Did one more person from your class have um, a similar yeah, Hey, I have Layla's lunchbox. I have Layla's lunchbox. You have Layla's lunchbox. Okay, thank you. Miss Reem, I saw, oh, Naeem? Okay, last person, and then we have to hand. Go ahead, Naeem. Okay, yes, let's... Naeem, go ahead and unmute. Um, I, th I think uh, maybe she can send uh, this book to the uh, whole world. Oh! And, <laughs> and, and maybe someone might know Kyle, so they can tell her about it. That's such yeah. a good point. Okay, so if somebody knows Kyle, who is like Miss Reem's age, they can say, I've got a book for you. <laughs> Miss Reem, do you have an idea? <laughs> I, I do. So if you're looking for him, his name is actually Neil, not Kyle. So keep an eye out for that. And then also, um, one idea I had when you were saying, what could you do? Because I don't know where he lives or which continent he's on, is I could always pray for him. That popped up when you said that. I thought, you know what? I could pray. I could say, Allah, make him happy. Make him feel at peace. Um, and forgive me for whatever I've done. And make him be a good person. Me be a good person. And maybe I can reunite and meet him in genital for those. And say sorry. <laughs> you know? So thanks for the idea, Dr. Shaza. I will start making those Ramadan duets. <laughs> Inshallah, we have to forgive ourselves and be compassionate and find ways to heal. Um, Jazakum al and Ms. Reem, for this extremely entertaining, thoughtful, um, informative, and inspiring story. And all your other stories, Ms. Reem, we pray to Allah that he continues to give you ideas. And guess what, kiddos? You can be the next Reem Farooqi, inshallah, right now. You can be writing your own stories, and you can even have an animated cartoon made out of it by submitting to Isla's Ramadan Connect story competition. We are so happy to have had you all join. We are going to ask everyone to unmute, and we're going to recite Surat Al-Asr together. I know, kind of crazy, isn't it? But let's do it. We're going to recite Surat Al-Asr I've had that this was a action, this was a practice from amongst the Prophet Sallallahu and his Sahabi, his companions, that they would recite Surah Al-Asr to remind themselves about how quickly time is leaving us. Just like in Miss Reem's story, we need to take advantage of time right now so that we can benefit from it. So let's go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakumullah khairan guys, I hope to see you on Monday for our next read aloud and then Wednesday for our story animation. Workshop. Thank you again, Miss Reem. Jazakumullah khairan. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye,